want to save a boatload of money, well, just stay tuned. I'm fixing to show you how to do it. I just got back from my uh, local McCoy's, headed back to the shop. You guys may have remembered my uh, the video I did on the plasma cutter, how it kept throwing my breaker. Well, we're going to fix that. In the description of the last video I did on the plasma cutter, I had asked you guys to go check out Matt's shop. I'm going to, again, on this video, I'm going to put a link in the description below to his channel. Guys, this young man knows his small engines. He knows his way around a shop. you got to go subscribe to Matt's shop. He is an absolute wizard when it comes to repairing just about anything. Alrighty guys, so the best way that I can explain how to do this is here is your, or here is my sub panel. You've got 110 volts coming in on this side and you have 110 volts coming in on this side. The only thing that I have on this breaker is a few light bulbs and a few outlets. This is not going to be a heavy duty sub panel whatsoever. I don't run three and four horsepower motors off of this panel like i said it's just a couple light bulbs and uh, maybe a fan during the summer so to get 240 volts to an outlet you're gonna have to install you one of these double pole 30 amp breakers 30 amps the minimum you could go 50 but what i'm gonna run nothing over 30 or 30 is plenty of uh, circuit protection so basically you're just going to clip, make sure the power's off, of course, but you're just going to clip this breaker in. It's going to, uh, it's going to piggyback on this black wire here, which is 110, and that one right there, which is 110. So when you plug this in, you're going to get 240 volts for your new uh, plug. Go ahead and snap it in. New breakers are sometimes a little bit of a pain to push in. It's on, or it's in. I'm gonna flip it to the on position. And we should get 250 volts, 240 volts across these two terminals right here. I can verify that we're getting the proper amount of voltage. So the next step is to mount our new plug. We'll run the wires and uh, get this thing buttoned back together so we can have some adequate power for my welding machine and my new plasma cutter. So here is my new 240 volt outlet and here is the plug for the end of the plasma cutter. As you can tell, the cord is gonna be down. I want it to be, when I plug it in, the cord to be running towards the ground and our top pin is on top. So that means we're gonna to have to mount our box just like this on the wall. It's got a knockout for your wire. I've got a couple of uh, conduit clips. We'll just go ahead and get this mounted and get our wire ran. I can't decide if I wanna mount it on the pole here, right next to the breaker box to where I only have like an eight inch run of wire or do I want to mount it on the inside of the pole like this, which will be okay too. And I won't have that much wire to run. I can go straight to the bottom of my box with a knockout, run my wiring, and this will be out of the way. It won't get knocked off by anything. I think I'm just gonna mount it just like this, right next to the heavy duty uh, 20 amp 110 receptacle may go well you gotta go a little bit lower so you can have room to run your wiring i would say probably somewhere oh six eight inches i think i'm gonna do it right there all righty guys so this is what i've gotten so far i've got my breaker installed i've got my romex ran and we just got the ground already hooked up right here. And we got our two hots, black and red. This particular uh, 
outlet doesn't have the fourth wire for your common, so we're not gonna run a common to the common bar on this particular application. Now we just gotta run our wires to our new receptacle and we'll have 30 amps of uh, continuous 220 volts so that we can sustain, you know, continuously run our plasma cutter or even my welding machine. All right, got my two hots, ran down to my new plug. Hot, hot, and ground. Now when we put our voltmeter, we should have 240 volts across these main terminals and you should have 110 between here and here and here and here. Let's test that out. Being super careful since this is a live circuit now, we have our 250 volts is what we need. And if we go from either one of these legs to ground, we should have only 120. So we're good there. Try the other leg, 120. Both legs together, 240, 250. Slide your cover on, install the screw that holds the cover on, and you're good to go. Let's test it out. All right, we've got it cranked up to 50 amps. Let's come right over here and see if we can't cut this right in two now without the tr breaker tripping. job well done one of these days I'll get my shop finished <laughs> had to uh, had to knock out a couple of ports for the the breakers but that's expected she's good to go this is a GE box by the way oh and another thing you can do since you got a heavy-duty 220 plug now you can buy an adapter that plugs into this to only go off of one leg of this so you can have a, a heavy duty, extra heavy duty 110 to run whatever you need. If you're having a high draw or something, you can plug it into your 220 outlet and it's good to go. All right, guys, hey, we got the breaker box situated and we got the, the plasma cutter and whatever else I wanna plug into my little 220 outlet right there, good to go. Hey. I know this is gonna help some of you out, and if it did, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And while you're there doing that, go ahead and click that heart and that bell to get all my new content. Y'all have a good day, more Medic One.